Hello folks, well have I got a treat for you. I was handed this um, project uh, yesterday and as you can see there's a box, although that might be a little bit of a red herring. It's a Bowman model kit of the Rudder Bug. Now the Rudder Bug was perhaps one of the first purpose built radio control aircraft back in 1949 1950 and um, I say one of the first purpose built because up until that date uh, any attempt at radio control had basically revolved around taking uh, one of the big free flight models 8 foot wingspan and putting the very rudimentary radio control equipment into them simply because that's uh, the sort of wingspan that was required in wing area to lug up into the air the heavy the heavy gear. However, by 1949, things had come along a little bit, and the clue was in the name the rudder bug. This was a single channel radio control aircraft, and perhaps for the first time, the model was designed around the radio control equipment available at that time, rather than converting of a large free flight model. Well, you can see that there's not clearly a full kit in here. There's not a full model in here. What I've got is a rather nicely made fin. Very good quality workmanship. More of that in a second. There appears to be a full set of wing ribs. Some large chunks of balsa, inch, inch thickness stuff. Appears to be only one side there, no matter. There are other big lumps that you can make another side from, I'm sure. I think that's what that maybe came from. Um, an attempt at an undercarriage, some undercarriage legs, very low profile. The plans came with this. Let's have a look at them. These are the plans for the wings, but the builder has departed quite radically from the concept of the wings. And if I tell you that the person that made this, um, I actually own one of his other models, and that's a man by the name of Dick Lindsley. Um, he's passed away, unfortunately. I wish I'd met him, because he was obviously a very skilled modeler. Um, I actually own his night train um, and I've flown it a couple of times now. I haven't had many opportunities. It's a big beast of a model, uh, a converted duration free flight. It's been increased in size by one and a half times and it just climbs vertically and flies beautifully. Uh, but the quality of the workmanship is what really attracted me to the model. So when I got a phone call saying, I've got one of Dick's models and basically it's too much for me. I don't fancy taking it on. Would you like to have a look at it? I jumped at the chance and it's really quirky. If we look here, you can see it's a very low undercarriage, um, big access doors in the side to get into that big radio gear that would have existed at the time. A very simple structure, a very strong stru structure, which relies on triangles to make up the fuselage. Well, I'm going to start by showing you the wings. I'll bring one of them over because we'll not get both of them into shot. There's the horizontal stab, beautifully made. The quality of the joints is just spot on, which you would expect. There's one of the wings, once again, beautifully made. Now, this is designed to be a one-piece wing of six-foot wingspan, 74 inches. But you can see the dick has departed somewhat from the original design. There's a hardwood plug. It's been drilled out and that's exactly a half an inch. I know because I've tried a, a, a half inch steel dowel in it. And then there's a nylon plug. 
that's drilled out more of that in a second but there's no incident shown on this wing it's this uh, root rib at all you can see the cross section I hope there's a slight under camber on the aerofoil uh, I'm not sure what the aerofoil designation is but there's a yeah, that would clearly produce a lot of lift so the other one's exactly the same you can you get the general idea I'm going to put that to one side and I'm going to show you the fuselage and then we'll see why this is so interesting and I won't ask for some advice really so there we have the fuselage which has been built to the same usual standard that you would associate with this builder beautifully made hasn't got the undercarriage obviously um, the thin which I've put down somewhere would slot into there quite easily the, under, the horizontal stab sits in the back but then things get really strange Dick has added an extra section to the centre of the wing. This section here takes it beyond the 74 inches. And it's this section here that has the incident for the wings. So what on earth is going on here? Well, we have a piece of aluminium that's been machined. And the first thing that strikes you is, well... That tool's bigger than um, half an inch. It's also been bored. It's not only been machined in the lathe to produce a cylinder, it's been bored out to a precise set of steps. There's a hole in the top at each side, I suspect for a plug. And then here's the weird bit. If I zoom in. We have, wait a moment, these tilt arms with a ball at the end. Now, unfortunately, the plug part that goes from the wing into this bit is missing. But this bit gives you a clue to how this is going to work. I suspect these would be going into the fuselage to a servo underneath. And if that, that, these were attached to a servo, you would get an alternative movement, like that. Clearly this is to de a design that's intended to tilt the angle of attack alternatively for both wings. It's what I believe is going on here is an attempt to do what Cliff Harvey tried to do with his pink Spitfire, but on a much, much bigger scale. If I put the wing into position, now obviously I haven't got the connector and that's a concern. So that, that would need to have a dowel, I think fixed in there permanently of a half inch diameter. But what comes out would need to be more complicated than that to fit, I believe, this receptacle here. I suspect the plug that came out the wing would have to have a series of steps so that it locked in to this. That's going to make life awkward but let's show you how it goes together. That clicks in. There's a, um, a plywood rib missing which is a found in the box which takes up that gap actually now if you imagine it's going to be locked with the bar going through here and if that goes up and down you're going to get i'm exaggerating it but you're going to get that movement because it would pivot on this front that's what's happening <laughs> it's crazy stuff I don't know whether I'm brave enough to attempt it. 
but I would sure like to have a go. Um, failing that, it wouldn't be too big a job, but I think it would be a shame to take this out, which in fact only means you would have to remove the end ribs and the mechanism, and then you've got the actual required angle for the wing. The wings would have to have a retro set of braces built into them. That would be fairly easy to do. There's quite robust hardwood bracing here, but I would have to put a, a brace, I suspect, on this side and on this side, cutting out and attacking it from the underside of the wing, and then just have as it was originally designed. Uh, I wouldn't do it rudder only, I would still have an elevator, if nothing else, just to trim out the difference between the power and the glide phase of these models. Um, but isn't that interesting? Any thoughts on this? Have anybody seen anything like it? I'd be really uh, interested to find out. And I'm sure Cliff Harvey will love this because it's exactly the idea, the concept that he was attempting to do with the pink Spitfire. Isn't life strange that these things come your way? So that's the conundrum, machining. And the other thing is, would that be long enough and strong enough to hold the wing in place? There doesn't seem to be a lot going on there. It's only an inch and a half deep in here. And likewise, the dough that goes that would go into the wing only goes in about three inches. Would that be enough? I don't know. But isn't that an interesting project? Um, I'm a I'm a sucker for this sort of thing. Uh, if nothing else, it'll be built as it was originally designed with the addition of an elevator. But I sure would like to work out what's going on here. And if anybody has got any idea about, um, have they ever tried it? Have they ever seen it before? So if you've enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. More importantly, if you've got any ideas, please share them on the mystery of this tilting all wing aileron design that to my knowledge, I've never seen before. I've never seen anything like it. If I hadn't seen Cliff Harvey's efforts on his little pink Spitfire, um, I think I would have been quite flummoxed. Uh, but there you go. Any ideas, throw them my way. I'm not saying I'll take them up, but I'm open to suggestions. Thanks for looking in. Bye now.